Zo. When it comes to the analysis of the data, I'll come back to that later. Yeah. First trend is massive increase in surveillance generally, either direct or through the, the data trails that you leave behind. Now we come to another trend. Another trend that you can spot in the United Kingdom, but I can also spot it in the rest of Europe. That's called bringing protection forward, and I'm quoting somebody I used to know very well before the poor man died, but it's too young, Sebastian Kobler, and he wrote the book, The Fourth Verdict of Staatssuits, which in itself is a quote from the 1930s. And it is the idea that if there is a serious threat, in those sense this is a political threat to um, the essence of the state, the security of the state, then it wasn't good enough to just go and stop the criminals or the terrorists or the enemies of the state when they were actually in the process of throwing bombs. You had to bring your protection forward and you had to stop them while they were still only thinking about perpetrating those, state, those, those crimes. The same is happening in the anti-terrorist field now. But in fact, it is a wider trend. And I wrote a big, big study with my friends from the Foundation for Information Policy Research on surveillance of children in the United Kingdom. It's called Children's Databases. And you can get it from the Information Commissioner's Office of the United Kingdom. It's you know, downloaded. Um, and it starts with good intentions, like all steps on the way to hell, as uh, I usually said. And I think it's very illustrative to come up with the example from the non-terrorist field, the non-criminal justice field, because I think whenever we talk about measures in the anti-terrorist field, people think that will never affect me. Right? Now let's talk about the other one. This is about in the United Kingdom, a typical Labour government idea. They see that children, some children, are failing. They are falling through the net. They don't achieve their proper potential. Yeah? And if you do analysis, of course, government does analysis, academics do analysis, you find a number of factors that are associated with doing very badly at school, or um, getting ill, or dying young, or becoming a drug addict, or whatever. Yeah? And so what does a government do? for very good purposes. It says, why don't we try and identify children that are likely to go astray? Yeah. And try and deal with them, I'll come back to what dealing with the child means later on, as early as possible so that they are going to grow up to reach their full potential. What it means, if you really want to do that, is they say, we need to have the information, we need to be able to select these children from the general population, so we can target our resources and help them to achieve their full potential. Now, there has always been a very highly developed surveillance mechanism on children in the United Kingdom, just as it's in the Netherlands. And this is to protect children against abuse, sexual or physical abuse, direct Kinder mishandling, no? direct maltreatment of children. If a child is ill-treated, or if there's a serious, real, factual suspicion that the child is either physically or sexually, or even psychologically seriously abused, usually by his parents, then all kind of limitations that normally apply go out of the window, quite rightly so. A doctor not only has the right, but has the duty to report such a case to the social services. Yeah? and possibly to the police. There are different sort of steps, and they're defined differently in different legal systems, but in order to protect a child against physical or sexual abuse, quite rightly, data protection goes out of the window. The social worker will talk to the doctor, the doctor will talk to the, the youth justice, the guidance, person, or whatever they're called, and they will work together with, but it needs to be also against, the parents to prosecute them. And that is quite right in the area of child abuse. What's happening in the United Kingdom is that they're bringing this forward, they're, they're extending this, this principle. They're saying we must basically do the same every time we think a child is at risk of failing the government targets, at risk of not getting a good enough diploma, at risk of not eating enough vegetables, etc.
It sounds funny, but it's true. Yeah? In order to do this, they now demand that all the data goes to the center. So schools that used to report only aggregate numbers, statistical numbers, how many children would pass particular exams, are now required to report detailed figures on all children. Yeah? Then they used to have a, a careers guidance officer in schools. You know, if you're, you're all very young, so you, can't, you can all still remember when you're about 14, 15, 16 at school, there is somebody who comes to you and says, what do you want to become? You say, well, I want to become a lawyer, well, that's what you've got to do, maybe you should take these kind of, kind of options at, at school. And they can help you along. That was privatized. And one of the consequences of privatization, when something becomes a profit-making entity is that they look for more fields in which to expand. Well, they said we can expand into this new field of monitoring children. They're called connections. And I think that really, although they themselves don't see themselves as evil, they themselves see them only as helping the children along. Yeah? I think they've got quite a, a dangerous role that they've given themselves. They collect all these data and they will advise children on what they can do, but they will also diagnose. That's a diagnostic form that you really have to look at in great detail to see how ghastly it is. And they will see if there are danger signs. Is this child perhaps in need of psychological counseling? Yeah? Is this child in need of some kind of medical test? Should we get in touch with the police? What they do is they sit down with the child, and it is still a child, even if you're 16 and 17, you think you're quite old, but if you sit down with an adult at school, in a school context, and they're asking you a lot of questions, they will ask, do you use drugs? And that includes uh, a few puffs on a hash cigarette. Does your brother or your sister, your friends, are you involved in sexual activity? It's not illegal to be involved in sexual activity, but they still write it down on the form. And the form goes to a central office and is shared with the social services. These are the kind of questions. Are the parents suitable parents? Do they set the right targets for the child? That is a dangerous kind of thing to ask. What is the right child? If you tell your child it doesn't matter if you don't become a lawyer, you can be just as happy being a pop musician. Are you an inadequate parent? Is the child inadequate for not wanting to become a lawyer or wanting to become a pop musician? It's very bad and dangerous. These are quite different kind of questions than the ones you ask if you want to find out if a child is being abused. And using the one system to target the, the other kind of issue is quite dangerous. We've described it in great detail in this report. I've given uh, Hildegard a copy, so I'm sure if you want to go, you can go and have a But you can also get it online, children's databases. Um, they basically have put in place a comprehensive system of surveillance over under 18 year olds in the United Kingdom. These things always creep. Yeah? The next group that they're extending it to is the elderly. Elderly are also these film and work groups that we've got to go and look after, so we've got to go and get all the data in the world on them. Yeah? Um, people from ethnic minorities who already feel targeted in all kinds of other, not very friendly ways. So this surveillance culture, this bringing forward the attention of the state is happening not just in these special fields of criminal justice and terrorism, it's happening much wider than that. And I, th I really think you should be aware of it. Of course the same is happening, although I'm not sure, I don't know so much about it. I think similar things are happening in the, United, in, in the Netherlands. I know that there are all kinds of programs of data sharing between different agencies. There are dangers involved in that. In Germany, I wrote two big appendices to this report, one on Germany, one on France. In Germany, there is actually a prohibition in passing on information other than actual marks from preschool, kindergarten, as I say, <laughs> to the first primary school, because they say it would label a child if you gave too much information from one to the other. And that's exactly what's happening in the United Kingdom. If you get sent from one school to another school, with a label around your neck saying, failure, likely to become a criminal. You are extremely likely to be stopped by the police. Yeah? The police stops people. On one occasion, the police